Okay, guys, I believe we have a small technical difficulty before we take you back. Uh, I can promise you this is going to be exciting, though. We're actually seeing the third flagship of the day. Remember, one flagship in a very convincing win, and another flagship lost uh, the match after, uh, as far as I remember. Uh, Brianna, we've only seen three flagships today, counting this one. Uh, why do you think teams are holding back on these ships? Um, so for anyone familiar to the concept of flagships, um, they're actually like their name. So each alliance can choose to field one flagship for any of the tournament matches. And once the, the thing about these flagships is that their setups are always going to be available to the public. So you can actually find the entire setup um, on a spreadsheet that's actually pasted on Google Docs, I believe. And the thing with these flagships is that they're always most of them are immensely expensive setups with a lot of officer fittings and faction fittings. And I think people are just trying to hold, hold back from using them until they get a feel of what the opponents are going to field and what, what each alliance you know, style of play is going to be before they use them because they're so expensive. Yeah, they certainly are expensive. The uh, first flagship of the day, of course, winning in, in very convincing fashion, was actually worth around uh, $13 billion, uh, which is $13 billion in a single ship. Uh, that's a bit of a convincing number that, uh, that should uh, be more than is in what most people have in their wallets these days. Uh, but yeah, we, we like seeing them. They're expensive. Of course, some, some teams want to hold them off, but it is fun seeing them here on the second day of the tournament. Uh, number three uh, here at Balgorn. Uh, we're not quite ready with the match. Um, Verone, for some of the new viewers out there, if people are wondering about the shield and armor tanking, uh, w w what is shield and armor tanking and what's the difference? Well, the main difference is um, how cap and skill of intensive it is, in all honesty. Um, generally, shield tanking you'll find is a lot more cap intensive um, and it utilizes the mid slots of a ship. So typically, a, a ship with more mid slots. Um, will obviously tank better. Um, you find the Kaldari and Minmatar ships typically will favor shield tank, and all of the Kaldari ships and a selection of the Minmatar hulls that have extensive amounts of mid slots. Um, basically, a shield tank involves boosting your shield resistances um, and trying to get the most efficient way to run it. You can run it passively or you can run it actively with a shield booster. If you run passively, then we see, like we see on a lot of the drakes in the tournament, um, you just rely solely on the recharge rate of your shields because they recharge over time and try to boost it as high as you possibly can um, to overcome the DPS that you're sustaining. Um, but as with armor tanking, shield tanking, shield resistance matters a lot. Um, Armor tanking is a little bit different in the respect that your shield acts pretty much just as a buffer to tell you when to turn your armor repairers on. Um, again, you want as high resistances as possible on an active uh, armor tank um, and a good pair of, uh, of armor repairers. Uh, depending on your ship class, it'll be small, medium or large. Um, or you can also go on the route that we've seen a lot in the tournament if you're utilizing a logistic ship and you can go for a passive, what's called a passive buffer tank where you'll add a lot of hit points to the ship um, through the use of armor plates. Well, I'm sorry to have to interrupt you here, but the teams on the field are ready. Uh, let's continue that thought afterwards. We definitely want to introduce all our new uh, viewers to exactly uh, what the whole remote uh, remote armor transferring is and, and the other uh, uh, types of tanking we've seen. But uh, the teams are ready, and we are just a few minutes delayed, but uh, commentators, please uh, tell the viewers what we have on the field. Outstanding, and as um, Sandra have said, uh, we have for Rot Capel on the field, um, and Eos, their flagship Balcon, Rot Dreyer, two Brutix, three Purifiers, a Guardian, and two Keras. And for Silver Twilight Enterprises, they have a Nighthawk, Basilisk, a Rook, a Kitsune, and, th and three Ravens, excuse me. And incidentally, uh, the, m the match is underway, um, and yes, we have Electron Bombs on the field already. Let's see how well these guys can put out their um, out their bombs and see how they do. Um, present, it doesn't look as if they're actually going to reach. Um, no, Road Capel's bombs, they're uh, exploding a little prematurely, um, and unfortunately not making it uh, to the Silver Twilight Enterprises team. However, it does seem like the kit soon for Silver Enterprises and also their rook is down already, which means a lot of the jamming power is already gone. And it remains to be seen how they fare against a very heavy nuding and bombing setup, but it's, it's really looking very good for the Basculus, who is starting to take a, a lot of shield damage and is actually about to explode. 
Yep, losing the Basilisk immediately there for Silver Twilight Enterprises. The um, initial bomb run from uh, from Royal Capel wasn't that impressive, um, unfortunately. You can see there the uh, Balkorn flagship, Royal Korea, worth roughly about four billion. Uh, two billion of that alone in stasis web fires. Um, it's taken some fireys roughly at half shields. Uh, we can see um, one of the Brutex is also into armor, but the Guardian pilot uh, from um, from Rock Capel managing to uh, claw back that armor for him. Yeah, it's it's really no problem for the Guardian pilot because, uh, after all, their whole setup is armored. So even if the shields are gone, they still have a lot of armor left. And as we said before, that's that's the main difference between armor and shield tanking. And as we can see here, the Rod Capel, one of the Rod Capel Brutexes, is being slowly wrapped up, and it, you see that his armor never really drops below um, like 80% armor. And again, one of Silver, uh, Silver Twilight Enterprises' um, ships is being blown up by uh, the very high DPS that's being fielded by the Rod Capel team. Yeah, we can see that the power of this Balkon is absolutely unbelievable. Um... What looks like Mega Pulse Laser 2s and Scorch Crystals, uh, close range Tech 2 Pulse Crystals, um, absolutely tearing through one of the Ravens there, setting to work on a second one now, um, absolutely just battering the shield tanks of these two things. Absolutely, you can see one of the Ravens from the Silver Twilight team is it's about to blow up. If you lose the shields on a raven, it's 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 gone. It's basically it has no tech whatsoever. And as we just as we're saying here, uh, this certain raven pilot is is about to get blown up, and there he goes. Yep, and there's two ravens down for um, for the Silver Twilight Enterprises team. My God, uh, just a Nighthawk and a raven left on the field now for Silver Twilight Enterprises. Um, Rod Capel's team pretty much untouched by their EW support. Um, it's been very surprising. You can see there just the sheer amount of damage that Balkon's putting out. Uh, plus they have the uh, the Brudix is sat there as well. Probably somewhere between five and a half, seven hundred DPS each. And again, straight through shield and armor and structure pretty much doesn't exist for a Kaldari ship. We're actually seeing a lot of uh, uh, popularity for these Balkorn flagships and even just just them as battleships. So they're starting to become, uh, you know, nowhere as popular as the Macario in, in Tranquility, but uh, because of their powerful nuding ability and also their bonus to stasis webifying web ability, I think they're going to be a pretty uh, decent force to reckon with if you field them as a f in a tournament. Yeah, but outstanding show and real show of force from Rod Capel. We've got the last ship on the field for Silver Twilight Enterprises, the uh, Nighthawk, the only ship left, um, roughly around half shields, uh, probably going to go down soon, we should imagine, but um, yeah, very strong shown from them. Incidentally, speaking of Balkorns, we got a figure a little bit earlier today, and actually 85% of the ships that have been fielded as flagships are Balkorns. That's um, 24 out of 41, I believe it is. That's a lot of Balkorns. You, I, I think... If you want to buy a Belgorn, now is the time before the tournament is over because I believe the Jita prices are going to just skyrocket after this. After seeing how successful people are with their Belgorn tournaments, people are going to be wanting to use them in normal PvP. Yeah, but it looks like they're actually leaving that uh, Nighthawk alive so they can loot the field. Um, you know, it's a common tactic that's been used amongst everyone. Um, it's, um, yeah. Solid Sean from uh, from Rock Capel, without a doubt. It actually appears that Rock Capel is trying to pull what Hydra Lilla is trying to do, what to do here. Um, they're trying to ransom Silver Twilight Enterprises for one billion. But I guess they're not very successful. Thank you very much, guys. That was a convincing win by Ulta Capilla, a uh, tourney contender that we've seen several times so far, starting out strong this this uh, tournament. We have two more matches this evening. One is Snatch Victory versus the Space Police. The last match, which is one you should all be looking forward to, is Tormentum versus Star Fraction. That should be one uh, massive, awesome, uh, explosive, incredible, uh, possibly amazing uh, match. So stay around. We have the next match, uh, Snatch Victory versus Space Police, in about 10 minutes. We'll be right back.